Hello friends, welcome to CodeBoard. In this video, we are going to understand 2D arrays in Java. We'll see what are 2D arrays, how to declare and initialize them, and how to print the 2D array in Java, and also how to take user input for 2D arrays. So basically, you will understand the basics of 2D arrays in this video. But before that, if you are still unclear about the concepts of arrays, I recommend you watch our videos on arrays from the Java tutorial on our channel. After watching those videos, this will become much simpler to understand. If you are aware of the concepts of arrays, you are welcome here. Make sure you watch this video till the end to understand the concept of 2D arrays completely. So now as you know, this was our simple array that we saw in a lot of examples in our previous videos. This array has 5 elements and it has 1 row and multiple columns. So this is how a simple array looks like. And its index starts from 0 up to the size of array minus 1. Now this is okay if you want single row. But what if you want multiple rows? In that case, we use 2D arrays. So 2D arrays look like this. Here you can have multiple rows and multiple columns. Now there is not much difference between a simple array and 2D arrays. Both are same but indexing part is different. The way we access the elements is different. In single array, you have only one row, so you access elements by the index of the column. But in 2D arrays, you have to access element with row as well as column. So let's understand this in actual coding. So let's see how to declare and initialize a simple array. So this is a simple array with five elements and if you want to access them, you rotate a loop with index i starting from 0 up to size of array minus 1 and we print my array i. That is with the index we print the array. But in 2D arrays, now since we have multiple rows and multiple columns, we need both i and let's call this j. So both i and j to access this particular element. So firstly 2D array means we need two brackets here. That is how we tell the compiler that this is a 2D array and how to add elements, let's see. So suppose we want to add these elements from the 2D arrays. First we'll open the braces and then each row will come inside another brace. So first row has elements 1, 2, 3. So it will go like this. For second row you will again see comma and the second row will go inside another set of braces. So it will be 4, 5, 6 and then for the third row again it will be 7, 8, 9. So in this way statically we have given elements to 2D array. Now how to access this? For that let's understand clearly the concept of i and j. How to access it with i and j. So in this array for rows we are indicating i and for columns we are indicating j. So basically this particular first element is at row 1 and column also 1 but in Java the indexing starts from 0 so that is why we'll just give the indices first for columns it will go as 0 1 2 and for rows it will go as 0 1 2 so we have our indices here for column it is 0 1 2 and for rows 0 1 2 so the first element that is 1 is at row index 0 and column index 0 so that particular element is going to be accessed by my array and in brackets 0 0. So this indicates 0 row and 0 column. If you want the next element it is going to be 0 1 then 0 2 and so on. For this particular element which is 5 it will be 1 and 1. So this is how we declare and initialize the 2D array. Now let's see how to print this array. And we are obviously going to use index i and j. Now since there are two index and multiple rows and multiple columns, we need two for loops to print this array. In simple array, we used only one for loop with index i. Because there was only single row and with column, we incremented the index. But for 2D arrays, we need to increment both row and column. So we'll go from row. We'll first print the first row, then the second row, then the third row. So for that, we need to start with index i. So for i equal to 0, i less than my array dot length and i plus plus. Let's say int i. And we'll open this loop. Now, we are at 
row 0. We are already inside the loop and we are at row 0. Now we have to start with column. So for that we need another loop which has index j. So int j equal to 0 again j less than my array dot length and then j plus plus. So now we already have two loops here, one for rows, one for column. So now we are actually going to print this array element. So sys out, we'll use print here because we don't want to break the line in each row. So it is going to be my array. And since in the first iteration i is equal to 0, j is also equal to 0, we are going to print it as i and in the next bracket j. In the next iteration, i is going to remain 0 itself. Until this complete loop is not executed, i is not going to increment. So i will remain 0 itself and j will increment to 1. So we will have 0, 1. So in this way, next element will be printed. After that, we will have 0, 2. So the last element of this row will be printed. Once the row is over, that is this for loop is completed, we will print a line break after each row. So we'll just say sys out print ln for a line break. So after each row line is going to break and then execute the last loop. So in this way we have printed the multidimensional array. So let's run this code. Okay you can give a space here if you want to understand properly and if we run this we have this array printed here. So what happened here is, let's debug this and check. So we have a debug pointer at this particular loop after the first loop. Now i is equal to 0 and j is also equal to 0 first time. Okay, let's go inside this. i equal to 0 and j equal to 0. And then it will print my array i j. That is 1. So it is going to print one year. After that, it will execute again the for loop with j index because unless and until this particular for loop executes completely, it won't go to outer for loop. So now i equal to 0 and if we step over, j is equal to 1. So my array 0, 1 is going to be printed which is 2. So in this way, each element is going to be printed. Now, last element of this row is printed and then it will go to the line break. So, our line will break and it will come to the outer loop. So, now i is going to increment to 1. And again, same procedure will happen column wise. This loop will execute completely for second row and in this way, line break and the last iteration of i. And then complete third row will be printed. And in this way, it will come out of the for loop and the program will terminate here. So in this way, we can simply print 2D arrays in Java. Now, how to take user input for 2D arrays? Let's see. So we'll remove this static input that we have given. And let's say the size of the array is 3, 3. This also you can take from the user and iterate the loop up to size. Now for taking the user input as well, we are going to take same for loop. So for that we need a scanner object. So here we have a scanner object SC and simply in my array i comma j we are going to take the next input. equal to sc dot next in and we have to enter the elements row wise so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 in that particular order so let's print a statement here please enter elements row wise so let's run this program and we'll be entering elements so it is going to be 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and the output is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So in this way, you can take input from the user and print the output. This is how simply 2D arrays work. It's similar to simple arrays, 
just that we need two brackets here for handling both i and j index that is for handling both rows and columns and row wise we are going to simply print or take input for the arrays so remember always rows execute first and then columns so row wise data is printed so this was about 2d arrays guys in the next video we'll see more examples on 2d arrays and also more concepts of java so stay tuned and subscribe to our channel and also like and share this video thank you